Ayrton Kohler is re-elected Executive Secretary. Paul Douglas is chosen to continue serving as treasurer of the denomination. Audrey Anderson is one of seven vice presidents of the General Conference and the second woman to assume the position. This and other news you can check out now here on ANN Video. During the final minutes of the business session on Monday, June 6th, the Executive Committee of the Seventh-day Adventist Church voted to re-elect Ted N.C. Wilson as president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. This will be Wilson's third term. The delegates confirmed the nominating committee's decision. 1,284, or 74.9% of those voting, voted yes, and 431 delegates, or 25.1%, opted for no. The nominating committee also appointed seven vice presidents to join the leadership team for the denomination. The seven names include five current vice presidents, Abner De Los Santos, Jeffrey Umbuana, Thomas Lemon, Arthur Stelle, Guillermo Biaghi, and two new names, Audrey Anderson and Maurice Valentine. Anderson has been serving as an executive secretary in the Trans-European Division, and Maurice Valentine has been serving as vice president in the North American Division. Dr. Ella Simmons, who came on stage to chair this portion of the business meeting, had announced her retirement prior to this year's GC session. Born in Louisville, Kentucky, Simmons was the first woman to hold the vice presidency position in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. She was first elected at the 2005 General Conference session in St. Louis and is stepping down after 17 years of service in the same place where her term began. At the end of the second day of the business meetings, Hensley Muruven was elected undersecretary of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and Gerson De Santos, Claude Richley, Gary Krauss, Albert Kuhn, Karen Porter, and Samuel Saw were elected associate secretaries. William Costa Jr. was also nominated and confirmed as World Communication Director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. To see everyone who has been elected so far, go to gcsession.org slash voted positions. It's now time to hear about everything God is doing in various parts of the world through His people. Let's start with Southern Africa, in the region known as the Southern African Indian Ocean Division. Oh, that's amazing. Listen, my elder, that's the best news. Oh, it's really brilliant. We bless the Lord for that, man. Yes. Oh. Ah. Got you, my boy. Oh, this is really brilliant. Listen, thank you so much for sharing. Listen, my, my grandson is here, so I, I gotta go, but I really appreciate you just calling through, man. No, oh, thank you so, so much, man. Blessings to you. Hey, boy, how you doing? Very well, thank you so much. You've grown. What is that all about? Well, that was a beautiful call, amazing call. Someone was just telling me about the last quinquennium. Quinquennium? Yeah, quinquennium. That simply means that it's the past five years. So I'm older than a quinquennium? Let's just say that you are two quinquenniums minus three. Seven? Yes! So what happened that was so exciting? A lot happened in this period, yeah? Even through the pandemic? Even through the pandemic. I mean, the church grew from 3.4 million members to 4.1 million. 
million members. Oh, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot indeed. As the SID family continues to rally behind the Total Member Involvement Initiative, over the past years, both church members and entities have ensured that they fully participate in the call to reach the world and impact communities through the I Will Go strategic plan. As a result of the total member involvement in the Northeastern Angola Union, there has been some realignment in the territory as the union has grown from two conferences to four conferences. The union was blessed by a visit from the General Conference President, Elder Ted Wilson, and wife Nancy, accompanied by the SID President and his two officers, together with the union officers from Angola, Elder Wilson visited the country's president, His Excellency Jean Lorenzo. During his visit to the State House, Elder Ted Wilson emphasized the church's continuous engagement to partner with the local government on social projects. Elder Ted Wilson also attended the Big Sabbath at the magnificent November Stadium, where he addressed over 50,000 church members. He encouraged them to continue being active in the Total Member Involvement Initiative. It was a jubilant time for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Zambia, as His Excellency Hakainde Hichilema was appointed as Zambia's Seventh Republican President. In a country that has over a million baptized Seventh-day Adventist members, it is an honor and no surprise to have a state leader who is not only a member of the Adventist Church, but a master guide as well. Meals on Wheels is a registered non-profit organization, NPO, owned and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, Meals on Wheels is feeding more than 180,000 people every day across South Africa's nine provinces. Done. Well done, my boy. So proud of you. But you're right, Kulu. It really is exciting. It is really exciting. And to see members really being involved in the work of God, both young and old, especially during the pandemic. Really, God must be really pleased. Yeah, let's pray for those that are also at work, yeah? Dear Jesus, thank you for the day. Thank you for being with Kulu and I today. Thank you for the work that is happening in the SID and in the world with the church. We can't wait for you to come and take us up to heaven. We love you. Just now we pray. Amen. We praise and thank God for the many wonders he has done in the Southern African Indian Ocean region. And this video is just a small part of everything the Adventist Church is developing there. From Southern Africa, we go to the Trans-European Division, which encompasses 22 countries, including the United Kingdom, Finland, Poland, Sweden, and Greece. In 1928, our pioneers made a promise to take the Adventist message to every corner of our division territory and beyond. It is a promise we have kept. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that mission is alive and well in the Trans-European Division. With God's strength, we will not let secularism and materialism and the other isms stop us from fulfilling the Gospel Commission. Despite the challenges, we praise God for the opportunities He equipped and placed in the 88,355 members, 600 pastors, and 1,400 churches and companies. I'm convinced that Jesus opened a door in Europe that no one can shut. No matter the challenges, we are committed to sharing the gospel until the day of His return. Come with me and see how and where. In Belgrade, Serbia, a group of courageous bikers is turning every ride into mission. I love to, to ride the bike, first of all. I managed to connect that love with, with the mission. The Adventist Motorcycle Ministry is about sharing the gospel in practical ways. They organize rides, invite their non-Christian friends, and allow conversations to flow naturally. And the Holy Spirit is moving powerfully amongst them. We have Bible study online. We have Zoom classes. At the moment, we have Focus on Prophecy Zoom classes that are happening every Thursday. We have also online books for free that people can download on many, many different topics. We have an um, online Bible school where people can sign for it, and actually we have really good feedback. In the end of the day, our aim is to spread the gospel all over Ireland. That's the, 
That's the aim. Today, the gospel of grace shines brightly in Ireland, bringing hope and cheer to people in crisis. The worldwide COVID pandemic forced us into lockdown, but couldn't stop us from sharing the gospel. I believe that Zoom has definitely helped us with our mission. It's, it's, neighbor, it's given us opportunities, it's opened doors where we can step into places that we couldn't have gone before. In uh, Ukraine, I, I was there uh, with my family. Death, we see uh, houses which were destroyed. We see some circumstances when human life doesn't have any kind of value for other people. More than six million people fled Ukraine to find safety and refuge in neighboring countries. Church members have opened their doors to welcome refugees, demonstrating that love knows no borders. We are growing a new generation of missionaries, supporting their holistic development with new Adventist schools and programs designed to help them flourish. In Albania, a predominantly Muslim country, children are teaching their parents how to pray. Let me tell you the beautiful story of one of our students, a four-year-old boy. His family decided to move abroad. And when they arrived at their new home, the boy knelt to pray, just as he had learned at school. Surprisingly, his family joined him. They all knelt and prayed together for the first time. As we cooperate with God's purposes, and as we reorient what mission and evangelism mean, we believe we will see growth the likes of which the Trans-European Division Territory has never experienced before. Jesus has opened a door in Europe that can never be shut. With all my heart, I hope to be there when people need me. Jesus is always available when we need him, and the Trans-European Division is fulfilling Jesus' mission in this part of Europe. After the break, you will learn about how the nominating committee is formed and what its functions are. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the Word of God and prayer. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to His righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Every five years, the General Conference Session makes important decisions about the future leaders of the church. Learn how the nominating committee is formed and what its functions are.
The general conference session is a business meeting where important decisions are made about the future of the Adventist Church. While delegates have the responsibility to vote on recommendations resulting from previous executive committee meetings, the nominating committee is responsible for electing church leaders. To understand how the nominating committee is selected, it's important to understand the role of the delegates in this process. As the election process begins with nominating candidates, the nominating committee is formed on the first day of the session. Delegates separate into their own divisions where they each choose a portion of their delegation to join the nominating committee. While each division selects 10% of its regular delegates, the general conference selects 8% of its delegates at large to form the nominating committee. This year, there are 268 people on the nominating committee. Once all members are selected, the nominating committee is directed to a private room where it will select its own officers, a chairperson, vice chair. Ayrton Kohler is re-elected. ...considered by the nominating committee is the GC president. Once elected, the president makes recommendations about fellow leaders to the nominating committee for the remainder of the election process. Following the president, they select the GC secretary, treasurer, and then officers, and then the remaining positions. Before the nominating committee meets each day of GC session, its members share a prayer and devotional thought together, asking God to lead the decisions being made. It's time to watch a report from the Inter-American Division, whose vast territory includes Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, and Northern South America. In every story we read or hear about the pioneers, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Inter-American Division territory. We see portrayed a great deal of hard work, courage, selfless service, and determination. Moved by the conviction of having received a divine calling, many of these men, women, and children left their native countries to travel long distances with the certainty that they will undertake each step accompanied by the Spirit of God. That the Inter-American Division was officially organized in 1922 and today 
100 years later, it continues moving forward, seeking to crown its mission, not here on earth, but in the heavenly kingdom. This is the commitment of the membership and leaders of the church in this great territory. Son miembros muy fieles y altamente comprometidos con el Señor. Gracias a esa fidelidad y a la dirección del Espíritu Santo, la misión sigue avanzando en pequeñas comunidades, ciudades medianas y grandes urbes. Es un milagro y una manifestación de la voluntad divina, pues a pesar de los desafíos de salud, sociales o económicos que vivimos en el mundo, la Iglesia avanza y crece a pasos agigantados. The pulse of the church in the islands and countries of the Caribbean, in Mexico, Central America, Colombia, Venezuela, can be seen in the smiles, hugs, and tears of members totally involved in leading others to be disciples of the Master. Whether in English, Spanish, French, Creole, Papiamento, or any of the dozens of dialects, they are sons and daughters of God who have accepted the call and answered, I will go. There are no ages or limitations of time and place to accept the Lord's invitation. Members of all ages, with the support of their elders and pastors, have joined in preaching from home, school, or university, in the streets and offices, through radio or television, using new technologies, implementing creative and innovative ideas. Unlike our pioneers, many have left everything behind to travel to faraway places, even amidst the world's most uncertain and challenging times. As you can see, Inter America is life, happiness, color, excitement, and zeal. Inter America has a 100 year legacy of education service and evangelism. But above all, Inter-America embodies a solemn commitment to the heritage of the King of the Universe. Having been predestined according to his purpose and will, today we give him glory and praise. We believe in him, we wait for him, looking forward to the glorious day when we will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things he's done in the Inter-American Division. Now let's go to the Israel field, where members share the gospel in a practical way as they follow in the footsteps of Jesus in the land of the Bible. Shalom from the land of the Bible. 817 brothers and sisters living in Israel send you their greetings from Jerusalem, the city of peace. Dwelling in the proximity of the extraordinary monuments of biblical history nourishes our faith in a deep and meaningful way. 
Whether we mention Capernaum, Carmel, Jericho, Megiddo, or Jerusalem, we are overwhelmed with the splendor and majesty of God's action in a favor of this planet. But in a special way, we are thrilled to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and his apostles. In a country that knows so many threats for its safety, and where the walls between religions are extremely tall, it is important to choose the right approach in order to share with others the everlasting message of peace. One of the most effective methods is to build the centers of influence. Through the faithful and generous support of the global mission, we have several of them where we mingle with people, minister to their needs, earn trust, and address the message given by God to themselves. Nazareth is a special place for all Christians because of the fact that Jesus grew up there. By God's grace, during these last years, it was possible to organize multiple efforts in order to reach the Arabic population, such as computer training, health presentations, English as a second language lessons. But the involvement of the Adventist World Radio with building a new studio represents an immense blessing for the Israel field. This project will bring hope to the city and to the entire region, including surrounding countries. The young generation is representing one of the most dynamic portions of the Israel field. Led by Dara Doroshenko, with the support of Richard Medina, Valentin Elkin, Sara Kassel, and others, the young people across Israel are vastly implicated in the life of the society. For example, at the end of the winter session, the youth is participating in the distribution of warm clothes to homeless people. Moreover, they are ready to promote a healthy lifestyle or to protect the environment. Even the coronavirus pandemics were not able to stop the enthusiasm of the Israeli field youth. They found a way to spend more time in nature and to have regular online meetings strengthening ties and enjoying online fellowship. At the same time, a recent special event will stay in the memories of all when, at the end of the spiritual activities, one girl gave, took her decision to make the covenant with Christ through the waters of baptism. Since 2015, all the pastors of the Israel field were experiencing the greatest of joys in the ministry, which is to see people giving their hearts to Jesus. It is an immense privilege to be among the inhabitants of this beautiful country, but we can do nothing alone. It is only the power of the Holy Spirit that can help us to fulfill God's mandate we need your prayers. Please implore heaven for a special outpouring of God's blessings upon his people in Israel. May we be worthy of his grace and execute his will in the land of the Bible. And if not before, may we see each other in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will continue to pray for the church in this wonderful field. Thanks for watching ANN Video. Join us tomorrow for more news from the 61st General Conference Session in St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget to join us every day on the Adventist Church's YouTube channel for ANN In Depth and ANN Late Nightish, a news program especially designed for young people. Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click on the subscribe button so you're caught up every day with the news from the GC Session. You can also follow us live at gcsession.org slash live. We'll be broadcasting the full program every day along with music, worships, and evening devotionals. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 25. The passage says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end, He will stand on the earth.
That's our news for today. Remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until tomorrow, God bless. Welcome to a and In Depth. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am alone and that's okay. We're going to get through this. We're just going to do a few updates because a lot is going on. And actually the nominating committee is meeting right now to report on some of the new um, recommendations to the uh, delegates. But before they did that, they reported on the demographics of the nominees to the general conference because there was some discussion about that yesterday, if you remember. There were some questions on gender and representation. So they are reporting on that to the floor. The nominating committee did return a report this afternoon with nominations from World Division presidents. Instead of naming nominees for the EuroAsia division, the committee read a statement on behalf of the division. They requested to extend the terms of their current officers until 2022 annual council. Most of the names on the list were the incumbents, like we've heard this past couple days. So to view all of those names, visit gcsession.org and click on business. There are some names of newly elected division presidents, though, and we're going to go through those just now. Johan Kim was recommended for the Northern Asia Pacific Division. He was serving as the director of Adventist Mission and the assistant to the NSD president. Harrington Akumba Kumbwa was recommended for the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. He was serving as the union president of the Zambia Union Conference. Southern Zambia Union Conference, and the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. Roger Kenderma was recommended as the Southern Asia Pacific Division. He was serving as president of the South Pacific Union Conference. Daniel Duda was recommended as the Trans-European Division president, and he was serving as the education director of that division. And Robert Asai Bonzu was recommended for the West African Division. Previously, he was serving as a Dean of the Theological Seminary at the Adventist University of Africa. So those are our new division presidents, and I'm very sorry if I've butchered some of their names. Please forgive me. After the nominating committee's report, the delegates voted on the final constitution and bylaws agenda. So guys, let's stop and give them a hand. The constitution and bylaws committee still had several delegate comments to review. And they met earlier this evening. We are going to hear the results of that review tomorrow. Next on the afternoon session, returned its focus to the church manual agenda items. A few of the items inspired conversation. And here they are. The responsibilities of deacons and deaconesses. One of particular interest was providing assistance to members with special needs. The amendment that generated a lot of conversation on the floor was the creation of a spirit, a prophecy writings coordinator in churches in churches. Delegates shared their love and admiration for Ellen White and her writings, but many shared concerns that it would encourage focus, encourage focusing more on her writings than the Bible. An amendment on youth ministries was ultimately set back to the committee. There was a question about whether they should have youth be over 30. I think that should be okay. I don't know because I'm over 30. The amendment aimed to provide further definition to the ministry's work to encourage and train young people for discipleship. The committee will review their comments on the rewording and, def and clarify some of the terms and ideas. Other voted items included the no wall of partition amendment to include full text of Galatians 3.28 in the manual, membership record amendment to clarify confusing language around re members' records. So what can we expect tomorrow? Well, actually still, what can we expect tonight? Because they are having a business meeting tonight. They started, they changed things around on us and they started with worship tonight at seven. And now they're still talking about church manual amendments. So the nominating committee is meeting right now, as I said. So Kenya and Wenya on a and late night-ish will report on that, on that um, <laughs> nominating committee. And they will also go through some church manual amendments. And we'll expect to hear more of that tomorrow, as well as the nominating committee's maybe final report. Tomorrow is Thursday. It is our last day of business session. Please don't forget that on Friday, we're gonna have mission reports instead of having um, instead of having a business session because somewhere in the world, it is Sabbath starting on Friday. So we are gonna take that time away from business and we are gonna worship and hear about the amazing mission initiatives around the world. I also have to tell you, we are only gonna have one episode of ANN in depth tomorrow. That's gonna to be 8 p.m. live. So you can join us right here at 8 p.m. live for a and In Depth, that will be our final episode of the week. Don't forget, we will also have a and Light Night-ish 
tonight at 9.30. And we will have a and video at 7.30 tomorrow night and the final episode of a and Late Night-ish at 9.30 tomorrow night. So we are going to be wrapping up our coverage tomorrow, but a and video will still have one more episode on Friday night. So you'll have plenty of places to get your news. If you have any questions, please let us know. And don't forget, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have people waiting to pray for you on our social media channels, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and they will pray for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So make sure you drop in a prayer request. We'll see you next time. God bless.